Hello everybody, this is Eddie Gabor. I am the co-founder and CEO of Key Advisors Group. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for our most up-to-date videos and content that we push out uh, to everyone to try to bring value to their families. Uh, I wanted to shoot today's video due to the circumstances that have changed economically, in our opinion, in a big way. Uh, and it really stems from the liquidity risk and credit risk that we now have upon us uh, due to these bank failures that we've had. For those of you that have been following us for uh, years, you know that back in the very beginning of 2021, we've warned about this economic cycle heading in the wrong direction. Uh, and sometimes these cycles can last anywhere from 16 to 24 months. We don't know how long this one will last. We're gonna wait and see what the data tells us before we pivot and become bullish. Uh, but we've gotten a lot of questions that have come from the interview I had on Fox Business where I made the statement that there's nothing anyone can do at this point in time, in our opinion, to stop what is already happening. Uh, because a lot of talk now is, well, now the Fed's going to pivot. They're going to stop raising rates or they're only going to go a quarter basis point. In our opinion, we don't think they're going to cut rates. Uh, because they never cut rates until things get really, really bad. Um, and with the Fed meeting about a week away, I don't see that cut happening unless something dramatic happens, which I pray does not. Uh, so the two scenarios that are going to have the highest probability, of course, and it's probably about a 50-50 shot right now, is whether they raise rates 25 basis points or if they don't raise rates at all. Now, if they don't raise rates at all, in our opinion, what you'll probably get is an initial reaction of bullishness in the market. So you'll get another bear market bounce in our opinion, uh, but I believe it will be short-lived. That is what we've told our clients. This is how we are positioned. And here's why we believe it's going to be short-lived. When you take a look at what's happening now economically, things have gotten, in our opinion, materially worse. Uh, that is not to scare anyone. That's how we talk to our clients. That's what the data is telling us. Um, so the fact that the FDIC and the federal government had to put a backstop for all deposits in these banks tells you how crucial this mo that moment was. Because if they did not do that, you can only imagine what would have happened to the market and the panic that would have came across consumers where they would have gone and did a run on their banks around the country, in our opinion, and pushed all the money to the bigger banks uh, is more than likely what would have happened. So you can't have bank fa banks fail and the government come in to do a major backstop if some things aren't deteriorating economically. So the other thing to think about is think about all of the companies that have revolving lines of credit with these banks. They use these lines of credit to run their business. So the government is backing, backstopping the depositors so they can get their money. But these revolving lines of credit are now going to be problematic. Are these companies now going to be able to access capital? If not, how are they going to stay in business? Um, so we believe this is the beginning of the last phase of the bear market, which is always, in our opinion, the most painful. Uh, you can look at them all. And so now what we're going to be faced with is more bankruptcies, I mean, when you take a look at the amount of small businesses that are shutting their doors each week, and this is very sad because small businesses are the backbone of this country. And I know they don't get the headlines on TV because they're going to cover the big corporations. But without these small businesses, they're the ones that employ the most people. They're the ones that stimulate the economy, bring in the most tax revenue, and they are shutting their doors at a pace we haven't seen since 08, 09. Uh, and keep in mind, the consumer is strapped at the same time. Uh, we're seeing that on the auto loans, okay, especially in the subprime auto loans, we're seeing delinquencies again at the highest rate since 08, 09. So you have businesses failing at the fastest rate since the Great Recession. You're seeing loans and defaults at the same rate or close to it or even more in some sectors than the Great Recession. Um, and debt continues to pile up on the consumer side. So when you take a look at the scope of what we're dealing with here, this is not going to turn around because the Fed stops raising rates. 
the momentum has already headed downwards. And the other thing to keep in mind, and it's really as simple as this, if I could summarize everything as to why this is all happening, it's the cost of capital. The cost of capital, which is what it costs to borrow money, is more than double, triple, and quadruple for some businesses, depending upon the risk of that business. It's also more than doubled for the consumer. If a consumer has a line of credit, their line of credit has now doubled. Credit cards have increased. Auto loans, if you want to buy a car today, those interest rates have increased substantially. So when you increase the cost of capital that fast at such a high rate, some of these is just mathematically impossible for them to survive because you've increased the cost to run a household or a business at a time when demand is coming down. Uh, and again, it's just common sense in the fact that you can't increase expenses that much in a time period when the consumer is spending less money and not expect something bad to happen. So when they pause on rates, which they may do next week, it's not going to change the cost of capital. So the same problems we're dealing with today at this moment are still going to be here a month from now and two months from now. So again, if we see a bear market bounce, we would look at that as an opportunity to take some off the table. Now that's our opinion, doesn't mean that's what you have to do. Because again, they can't change the macro dynamics. Uh, and so again, I can't stress this enough. Every data point that we're looking at in regards to the economic activity um, whether it's housing, whether it's the consumer, whether it's debt, uh, is going in the wrong direction. And the other big thing that could affect financial institutions is the amount of commercial loans that are going to get refinanced. So think about someone that owns a uh, shopping center or has a lot of retail space or office space. You know, the rents demand and vacancy rates are increasing. So they're not getting the cash flow that they need to carry their current loans. How the hell are they going to be able to carry the cost of a loan that has a double or triple on the interest rate? Uh, so any financial institution that is highly concentrated in commercial loans could potentially have some additional risk there uh, to their balance sheet if they start to see defaults. We've already started to see it if you're paying attention on the real estate side. Um, and again, this cycle is just starting in regards to bankruptcies. You know, your first bankruptcy, unfortunately, is usually not your last. So to us, this is a moment to be extremely cautious and to kind of sit back and think to yourself, what's the upside potential versus what could happen downside? And we think there's more downside risk than upside potential, which is why we continue to have an extremely high cash position for our clients. Uh, the next thing that I just want to touch on real quick, and no one's talking about this right now because we're so focused on what's happening with the banks and the stock market. We have a debt ceiling debate that is underway right now. And in typical DC fashion, we think that we probably won't get some type of agreement until the 11th hour. The last time we were faced with something like this, the markets dropped by double digits percentage wise in a short period of time. So think about the macro dynamics we're having right now with what's happening with the banks, the volatility that has spiked, the economic activity that is deteriorating, and you're going to throw a budget fight on top of that, again, I don't see how an investor can look at this objectively, looking at the data and say that this is a great buying opportunity. Trust me, I know we could be wrong. Um, this is why we don't pound our chest when we're right, because this markets will humble you in a minute and the data could change for the bulls. But again, with what I've just outlined, all of these things are going to be happening over the next three months. So these next three months are going to be extremely volatile. And at that moment in time may be the buying opportunity for us to put the record amount of cash we have on the sidelines for clients back into the market in a strategic way. Personally, I think the buying opportunities are going to be more towards the summer because I think it's going to coincide with the debt ceiling debate that's going to cause a tremendous amount of downside pressure. Uh, but at the end of the day, we are heading for a hard landing, as we've been saying, 
for over a year, and there's nothing, unfortunately, in our opinion, anyone can do to stop it. And frankly, maybe for the long-term prosperity of this country, this is what we need. We need interest rates to be normalized because this zero interest rates environment that we've been living through for well over a decade, frankly, is the reason why we're in the predicament we're in now. And we have to make sure for our children and grandchildren that we never put this country in that position again. So this recalibration, in my opinion, is necessary, but unfortunately it's gonna be extremely painful for those that are not prepared for it. But it's time to put zero interest rates and loose monetary policy behind us and get back to a more normalized environment and we will get through this and then we'll get to a position where you'll start to grow in a smart fashion and risk management will be done, I believe, in a more smart fashion because interest rates won't be at a place that entices you to take unnecessary risks. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I just wanted again to take some time to explain a little bit more as to why at this point in time, we believe you need to have extreme caution because these next few months could be ones for the record books. Thank you, have a great day, and uh, make this a winning week for your family.